R, Ask Reddit, asks, Australians of Reddit, what is your great-great-great-great-grandparents' crime? My great-grandmother told me that they were three brothers that had a ship and would acquire goods and sell them off for profit. Pirates. They were pirates. E-D-I-T-1. So in reading some comments it would make more sense that the brothers were smugglers rather than pirates. Nan did gloss over on their history, and she's long gone now for me to ask her. Edit 2. Rip Inbox. Most upvoted comment is about my GGGGG grand uncle's plundering booty and plundering booties. Dot. LMFAO that's some way your great grandma described a pirate lol. Dude stole some bread and now I live on this giant island. Gotta eat to live. Gotta steal to eat. You know nothing of his life. All he did was steal some bread. 24,601. ETA. Look like this was needed. I was asking if he was 24,601. Not what is 24,601. Called a lord in parliament of mangy cunt. Australia was the right place for him. Frankly. Edit. Oh. Thank you so much for the gold. Excuse me while I go and have a shoey to celebrate. For anyone not clear on what that is. It's a beer drunk out of one's own shoe. Edit 2. People have been doing shoeys long before Daniel R. came along. Now if you call anybody in parliament a mangy cunt it's just the general consensus among us at this point. Ball tampering. Edit. Iron Man by the way. In the sport of cricket. Ball tampering is an action in which a fielder illegally alters the condition of the ball. For my fellow Americans. Sharpen the pitchforks and roughen the sandpaper. As my family will tell you my ancestor was transported for theft of a goose, however they gloss over the fact the goose's previous owner had to be strenuously convinced to relinquish it. So less theft and more battery. Stealing this for DND. My rogue no longer murders and loots, the Ole stab and grab, he strenuously convinces. Being goosed was a bit more violent in those days. Stole a horse. I guess modern day equivalent of GTA. Dot. Damn you Stormcloaks. Skyrim was fine until you came along. Empire was nice and lazy. If they hadn't been looking for you, I could have stolen that horse and been halfway to Hammerfell. Quote dot. GTE. My third great-grandfather emigrated from Prussia in the 1890s because he apparently was sick of the amount of wars Prussia got into. That's some foresight. Prussia had a few more in him at that point. I had a GGG grandparents emigrate from Prussia in the 1870s. I've always wondered why. Where some states have an army. The Prussian army has a state. I read in a family tree book that one of my ancestors stole a pair of silk baby booties. Pretty sure it was from the house she was working at. That's the kind of thing where years later they find the booties had fallen behind a dresser. Your ancestor grabbed booties? Stole a sack of flour from his aunt's store as a joke. The joke being, this bitch is so anal that she would notice one sack of flour missing. Quote dot. She did. He got convicted and sentenced to transportation to Australia. That man was named Henry Cable. Was the first convict to be pardoned. He was also the first settler to win a court case having sued the captain of his transportation vessel for stealing all of his belongings on the journey from England. He ended up owning large swaths of the Botany Bay region and ran a world-class trading company. Now my question is, where the fuck did all that fat early settler money go? Exclamation mark. Bonus, Wikipedia, URL redacted, wiki, Henry underscore cable, edit cause interest. Here is, another, URL redacted, biography, cable Henry 2285, I can't find any info on his crime other than, burglary. I seem to remember reading the anecdote about the theft of the flower in a book about him that I believe was written by another ancestor. I don't know what it was called. But if anyone has any more accurate info, I'd love to hear it. Stealing a pair of trousers. Sentenced to seven years transportation. The old Bailey transcripts can be read online which is pretty cool. His daughter married the son of the town mayor so I can only imagine the disapproval from the free settlers side of the family. Edit. The other sides of the family all freely emigrated to Australia in the early 1800s. I can find stories about some of them online. 
including a 5x great uncle who killed himself by looking into the barrel of a shotgun while cleaning it, and a family reunion of four brothers 27 years after they lost touch when they emigrated to Australia. One of the brothers posted a monthly ad in the paper asking if anyone had news of the missing brother. A great nephew of my convict ancestor died on the landing of Gallipoli so it's all very Australian. Dot. Not actually a direct ancestor of mine, but a guy killed the squire's bullock. He was so scared of being deported to Australia that he changed his name slightly. Hopped on a boat, and sailed himself to Australia. So when he arrived, he'd be a free man. Except the ship wrecked off the coast of Victoria. So he and a few others struggled ashore. In order to survive, he shot a bullock he came across for them to eat. It turned out to be a bullock belonging to the guy who owned that piece of land. Again, much later, he married that same guy's daughter. They named a street after him. Dot. This one was quite a ride eat it. This is now my second highest upvoted comment. Reddit is weird sometimes lol. One Englishman stole bread. One Englishman stole tobacco and a sheep. And one was a fiesty Irish prostitute. Prostitution was not a transportable offence but according to Ann Summers, Michael Sturmer and Hughes all the women were classified as whores even if they weren't prostitutes. One guy was sent for trying to steal the same duck three times edit, found the transcript. May not have been the same duck, URL redacted, education, resources, Georgian Britain age modernity, duck theft. Ah, so, you, fucks with ducks has Aussie ancestors. Swag bag contents. One duck, snatching sound, the same duck. Dot. Blew up a British barracks. Irishman. I'm surprised he wasn't hanged for that. At the time. Blew up a British barracks. Wait what? Irishman. Oh. At one point when the ratio of men to women was too high they went around to a bunch of workhouses and orphanages and took any girl aged 13 and above and shipped them to Australia. They didn't need the excuse of having committed a crime. They were poor and Irish and therefore cattle. I rarely get involved in discussions like this because I have a long family history from both sides of where some people like to draw a line but fact is fact. Irish were used to populate colonies with a workforce. When slavery was outlawed by Britain, which was very progressive for the time, they used other excuses like they were criminals or in the case of these children they were burdens on the state and marrying them would provide stability for them. I remember a story from school, social studies teacher, of a very rich Sydney family that traced their family only to find out their convict ancestor got deported for carnal knowledge of a sheep. There was that post a while ago that said something about how people back then, when they get caught stealing a sheep, would claim that they were having sex with it because it is less hefty of a crime than stealing a sheep. There it is. I knew there was a sheep fucker somewhere in this thread. I just had to stay true and keep scrolling. He stole some clothes worth 40 shillings. Got 7 years for it and sent here. He ended up marrying a convict woman who came over on the Lady Penryn. Having 13 kids, and killing himself at age 54. He's got his own, Wikipedia page, URL redacted, and everything. Edit. You can read the, article, URL redacted, that describes his suicide at the link. I find it quite fascinating to read an account of a suicide in a newspaper from 1818. It didn't occur to me that they would be quite so frank about it back then. But there ya go. I like how he ran out of names for the girls so here comes Anne. Mary. And Mary Anne. Are you and you, novice Caprica related? Being a sick cunt. Edit. Double gold. Fuck mates save your dollary dues for drop bear insurance. They're extra evil this year. Bloke I used to work with was once asked what he did for a living. He replied, oh I'm a trainee, when the person asked him what he was training to be he looked them straight in the eye and said, a sick cunt. F-U-A-A-A-A. Find out here you bunch of convicts. Just type in your surname and find out your great 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 grandfather wasn't as great as you thought, URL redacted, edit. These are just cases from one court in central London. That's great until your last name is a reasonably common word. We did this at work one day and the bloke who was so keen for everyone to try it did it himself, and the result came back as sexual perversion or some shit. 
he wasn't so thrilled. Being Irish was just about enough to get transported. At the time, the colony needed farm laborers. Didn't want to pay the farm laborers. And the English convicts were mostly city people who didn't know anything about crops. Some Irish people were transported without even being charged with any offense. The English made harsh laws against the Irish just to be able to get free agricultural workers. Thank God the Irish rebelled. He stole the Duke of Wellington's Chinese food. Was he arrested whilst enjoying said succulent Chinese meal? Fortunately, the Duke knew his judo well. Gentlemen, this is Democracy Manifest. Hashtag G-E-T-Y-O-U-R-H-A-N-D-O-F-F-M-Y-P-E-N-I-S My ancestor that arrived on the 13th fleet was a stowaway. Bit weird because they did commit a crime that caused them to go Australia but also they weren't sent to Australia for committing a crime. Tap's forehead can't be sentenced to Australia if you go to Australia. Made the armor for Ned Kelly. No joke. We have a certificate and everything. He managed to not go to jail though. Proof? My so's great 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 grandmother stole pewter pots from her employer. I believe this was effectively stealing a beer glass from a pub. However, we also know that the transportees on her ship were given behavior ratings on a scale from very good to very bad. She was given a rating of very bad, worst, so she was a bit of a rebel. Maybe she stole a lot of beer mugs. Alice Wilson, aged 29, was convicted at Preston Quarter Sessions in Lancashire in April 1845. Her crime was stealing a half-sovereign from John Barnes. One court case appearance stated that the Alice Wilson in question was from Leyland which is close to Preston. It seems that she was a notorious prostitute and petty thief. She was sentenced to life transportation. But the fresh air of Van Diemen's land, Tasmania, seemed to do her some good. She married the freeman George Barnes on May 17, 1847, about 18 months after she had arrived in Tasmania as a convict. She was pardoned in October 1854. Dot. I think I have a picture of her gravestone. Taken in Tasmania at Christmas. Cool. Whereabouts? Dot. A kid from my village was deported for stealing a pie that was cooling on a window sill. Shipped to Australia, as a kid back then, for a damned pie. The world and particularly England was particularly brutal during that era. We tend to forget, sometimes I read a bit on the local history of my neighborhood here in East London and one of the things that stands out the most is how brutal and hard life was really not that long ago. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to support the channel, and above all, have an excellent day you incredible people.